in some of my previous videos you will have seen these Kumpkin KP184 electronic loads. I've done a, a mini teardown, brief review and also um, shown some repairs of faulty unit that I received. And I bought these to um, do some testing of some high current power supplies on some equipment I'm currently repairing. And what you may have noticed in a previous video is they weren't all reading exactly the same voltage. And I mentioned that in the video and um, one viewer by the uh, name Zoom H2 was kind enough to point me towards the calibration information for these loads. So I've obtained a copy of that and in this video I'm just going to show you part of that uh, process. I won't go through the entire procedure, it's a bit uh, boring, but uh, I'll just show you the basics of how to go about calibrating these and then if you need to you can set yours up to uh, read correctly. So these have now all been running for about two hours so they're nicely settled down. You need to give them plenty of time to settle of course otherwise they'll just drift after you've completed the calibration and you won't have really gained anything. Uh, so what we need to do to get these KP184s into calibration mode is to power them off press and hold the up arrow key and then power them back on and after a few seconds you should see a message on the Kunkin screen that says CUV1 and that's the first uh, voltage calibration point. Now before I do that I just want to show why I'm going about this uh, calibration in the first place. So we'll just run the uh, Kunkin up through the voltage range and we can see what the readings are that each one is giving. So the way I have these configured on the bench, I've got the three KP184s uh, all wired in parallel. I've got the Agilent 34461A 6.5 digit bench multimeter. This is calibrated. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to show off the Advantest TR6143. If you're not familiar with these, they are very high precision pieces of equipment. I picked this up off eBay a number of years ago as a non-working unit and as you can see I've since repaired it. If you haven't seen one of these before it's a DC voltage current source and monitor so it's really a glorified uh, power supply and high precision uh, voltmeter, current meter all built into one unit. Uh, very flexible, very versatile uh, unfortunately they're very heavy and bulky so take up quite a bit of uh, space on the bench but uh, very useful for this sort of thing. In fact, it's way overkill for calibrating something like a KP184. To give you an idea of the specification for this unit, it can output voltage from zero up to 110 volts in 10 microvolt steps, and it can output current from zero to two amps in one nanoamp steps. So extremely precise and especially in a current range. The way I have all this configured, is I have the KP184s connected to the output of the uh, TR6143. I've got the sense terminals, which are the return uh, voltage monitor terminals, uh, fed back from the central load. And so we'll get a very, very precise uh, voltage measurement back to the uh, Advan test. It's not really necessary to do that for this setup, but uh, I thought I'd do that just to show uh, how it would normally be configured. Uh, and what it means is I can calibrate all of these units together and um, we can go over the entire range uh, up to the required voltage for the calibration of the KP184. In theory you could use a bench power supply to calibrate these um, but because we need to go up to in excess of 100 volts for the proper calibration then this is an ideal unit because of the uh, wide range and high output voltage it's capable of. So before I start uh, the calibration process, I thought I'd just demonstrate why it's necessary. So what I'll do is I'll turn on the voltage source and uh, we'll then sweep it up through a range of voltages and we'll see how the KP184s respond. So we'll start off at 10 volts. I'll turn the output of the uh, source on and we can now see that we're getting very close to uh, 10 volts on the uh, Agilent. But if we look at the KP184s, we'll see they're not too bad, but uh, we're getting 10.051, uh, 10.032, and 10.023. And it's not terrible, but it would be nice to have them a bit closer. 
I'll start to increase the voltage. So 20 volts, you can see the errors got a bit worse on the left hand one especially. 30 volts and we'll keep going out, we'll go to 100 volts. So that's 100 volts, you see very close to 100 volts and uh, we've lost some of the resolution of course on the Kunkin display but we can still see uh, we're getting quite a, a wide variation in readings. So it's not terrible but uh, it would be nice if they were a bit closer. So we'll go through the calibration process. Now if you do decide to try this, a uh, word of warning that the uh, Kunkin, uh, the way the calibration works is it takes two points uh, for each type of calibration, one at the low end and one at the higher end, and then it interpolates all the uh, values between, so it, it really it sets the offset and calibration slope automatically, uh, but it's a bit um, blind in the way it does it, so if you put in the wrong values or if you abort the process or get the process wrong, you'll end up with ridiculous uh, readings on the uh, display so if when you finish you're getting uh, what are obviously wrong readings then just go through the process again. It's fairly straightforward but uh, as I say it is um, a bit blind in the way that the KP184s uh, respond to this process. So step one, turn the source off and we need to put these into calibration mode uh, as I said to do that you turn them off, hold the up arrow, power them back on and they should come up uh, with the first uh, message on the screen showing that they are in the uh, first voltage calibration point. So I'll do all three at once. You can just do this by turning the switch off at the back, uh, but I want to do all three, and the easiest way is for me to just turn the uh, bench feed off to these and then hold all three keys and turn it back on. I'm not a piano player, so um, it's not uh, particularly easy to get all three keys in at once, but uh, I'll give it a go. I'll turn these three off. And as we can see, we've now got the CUV1 message on the centre line of each of the three loads. So it's now waiting for the first calibration point, which is specified at being 10 volts. So we'll set 10 volts on the uh, source, switch it on, and we can see we're getting the uh, readings in the top line of the KP184 and very close to 10 volts. And what we have to do is dial in on the bottom line of the KP184, the value we're actually measuring from our reference. So in this case it's 9, okay so what I've done is set them all to read as closely as I can the value that's shown on the Agilent. What you then do is press the set key, that's the first point entered and we now uh, set the source to the second expected calibration point. We need to change the um, KP184 so that it's ready to accept the second calibration point. So we press the down arrow and you'll see this will change to CU, uh, CUV2, which it has done, do the same on all of them and it's now waiting for the second calibration point and that's specified at being uh, 80 volts so we'll set this to 80 so we've now got 80 volts or close to 80 volts showing and the same thing we set the bottom line of the Kunkin to read our reference value and so we want 8 Okay, I now have all three set to match the Agilent and again we press the set key. Now if we've got this right, as we press the set key we should see that the display will change to something much closer to the reading on the Agilent. So this one has indeed changed, as has that one, and so has that one. If we carry on scrolling down through the menu that we are now in with the down arrow, it will take us through to the next calibration points, which are current. There's then two more, uh, slightly more ambiguous calibration settings, which are for the crossover point. Uh, so these loads operate in two ranges, and there's a calibration 
um, offset value that needs to be uh, catered for where those two modes swap over so you don't get a step change. As I say, I won't go through the entire process, it is quite um, time consuming and long winded, but you can just go through the process and as you can see, you should end up with something that is far more accurate. So if I now exit this menu, which you do by pressing the shift key, we can see now that we're back into normal operation and also we've now got much closer uh, voltage indications on the three units. I'll just go back down to 10 volts and you can see now that we are very close to uh, what the adjuvant is reading. And I'll just slowly go up uh, 20 volts, it's again very close. 30 volts, still very close. 40. So as you can see, they're now all three reading very close together. Uh, as opposed to what I had before, which was quite a, a discrepancy between them. It wasn't terrible before, maybe 50 millivolts, 70 millivolts, something like that. Uh, but now we're, we're within about 10 millivolts now or so, so that's uh, more than adequate for what I need these for. And I'll do the same thing with the current, get the current um, all reading uh, the same and in line with the reference. Uh, but as you can see, we're now quite close, and it does get to show that these are capable of reading. Uh, quite accurately if they're set up uh, properly. Okay, that's it for this video. If you want more information on this, then uh, let me know. If you want more information on the TR6143, then leave a comment. Um, otherwise, as I say, just be careful when you're going through this process, and if you get something ridiculous on the display, just go back through and try again.